Hello and welcome to a new video about programming Arduinos. This time we are coding our DHT11 temperature and, and moisture sensor. Uh, humidity and temperature. We made last time this, this uh, hardware setup. Uh, we did the power supply. We have one data line because no, it's an it's, uh, intelligent sensor via wire bus. We have to talk to the, to it, and we said it, this is one with a with a PCB printed circuit board. There is also a pull up resistor already built in, so should be fine for operating. If you just have the sensor itself, there are four legs, and you have to use a pull up resistor. If you want to know how to connect this down, I have linked a document with a connection plan. Good, so plug it in. Pimpidim and start to code. We said, okay, there is a bus. Yeah. There is a bus system. Somebody took already care, made decent programming. We're using a library, okay? But this library is not pre installed. We have to install it. So we can do this by opening tools and manage libraries here. Yeah? Manage libraries, then it takes a while, the library manager is open, tried to update the list of installed libraries and so on. Yeah. And here we can search and we are searching for the key term THD. Okay. Now it's filtered wherever THD is inside and you see it's quite a bunch of. Yeah? We are using this DHD sensor library from Adafruit. Yeah? Currently I've installed 1.3.10. Yeah? What is the latest version? 1.4.2. So I, you press you press here install, I press update. Okay. Now we have both installed the, the proper library. Okay, then we can close this and now we can use it. Okay. How to use it? Like always with include. So hashtag include dhd.h. This is how the library is called, which just, we just installed. Yeah. And I will define uh, the dht pin. And this I connected to uh, two. <laughs> Two. Okay. And then we have to define the object, the sensor as an object. We said in previous video it's working almost like defining a variable. So we are defining one object of the type DHD. I will call it sensor because it's the sensor. And then we have to give the DHD pin. Yeah? And then we also have to give the type. There are several types possible. Okay, there are several types possible. Uh, we are using DHT11. Okay, this is a DHT11, so we are saying DHT11. Inside the library, there are a number of such constants defined. Yeah? Uh, you can look it up in the library, or I will also write it down in the in those file I've mentioned before. Good. What we want to do is we want to read out the temperature, the humidity, and print it, print it uh, in the serial monitor. So we will start the serial connection. We'll again use 996 nine, yeah. and serial.print line. Some message at the beginning. Measurement started. Measurement started. And now we have to start up also the sensor. Sensor dot. And the command for this is begin. Yeah? They try to always use the same command so that we the methods, they are called methods yeah, in an object. Oh, doesn't really matter. Sensor begin. Okay. 
So, there are some some things we can read. For instance, for instance, sensor dot read humidity. Huh? This will return the humidity. Then we would have read temperature. This would return the temperature in degrees Celsius. If I'm using here true, then I get the temperature in Fahrenheit. Okay, so I will simply use here some some variables. Floating point is the return value. Temperature, and we said float. Damp in Fahrenheit, or we'll simply call it Fahrenheit. Okay. Now we have to check if those things which we have received are numbers. Okay, and there is a built-in function. is is called is none. Yeah? Is none is not a number. And then we are checking the humidity. So if the humidity is not a number, not a number format, yeah, then we read some garbage because it should be a number, right? And then we make these two lines, this is an OR. So if the humidity is not a number or the temperature is not a number or uh, the Fahrenheit is not a number, yeah? then something during reading out the sensor went wrong. Yeah? So I will print this. Failed to read sensor data. Good. And we make a return. What is a return? A return is ending the current function. So the loop function will be ended. It's starting here again. Yeah? So to, to reach a little bit delay, I will use 0 0.1 seconds delay so that in case we are not reading it, it is not always asked because then, you know, then we might run into timing issues. So I will delay this. Okay, uh, let's put it out, serial.print temperature, serial dot print temp and serial.print line. And we also give degree Celsius. We open a bracket. Inside the bracket, I want to have written the Fahrenheit. Without this space, close the bracket. Yeah. Uh, then oh, maybe humidity, humidity, hum, hum, not gum, not gum, yeah. and then in the end. We'll make serial print line and some percent. This is not a percent. Caps lock. Okay. So this should already tell us something. So file save as yeah, programs. What was the last one? 18. 
I will call it 90 DHD save. Cool. Let's see if it compiles and uploads. No. Aha. Uh -huh. Here some brackets are missing. Of course, here, of course, here. You see, it's even highlighted. I have not looked at it. Yeah. Upload. Compile clean, we are. Watch the serial monitor. Failed to read data from sensor. Why is that? Ha! Solved the mystery! <laughs> it was just a connection. I just wiggled around. It took a while, okay? I just wiggled around in the breadboard and suddenly, hey, I am reading. I am reading something. 27.3 degree. Oh, it's just hot here. No, yeah, it's hot there. <laughs> it's a hot summer day. Yeah. So, you see, it's working pretty easy. Yeah. If all connections are fine. Alrighty. Yeah. Good. So, ah. Uh, this is everything you have got to do and you read out. There are also another, another possibility. You can, you know, the field temperature a combination of humidity and temperature yeah, is the field temperature. Yeah, you can also, in English it's called the heat index. Yeah. So we could also uh, compute the heat index in degrees Celsius. This is already built in, in this library. It's called Compute Heat Index yeah. Temperature Humidity Falls. This is the heat index, in, heat index in degrees Celsius. And in Fahrenheit, we can either write through or omit it. It's the same. Okay. So this is the heat index. I will also write this inside here. So we write Fahrenheit and then we write heat. All right, heat degree Celsius. We're using this line. Then we write this. Okay, now we've computed the heat index. We are going to upload this. Hope that it's looking pretty decent. Yes. It feels a little bit hotter. I can confirm. <laughs> If you uncheck this auto scroll, you can browse through the list. Yeah? Because somewhere here, aha, okay, dropped. Humidity is the same. Auto scroll. See what happens if I cover this with my hand? Then probably, ah, the humidity is go already going up. Yeah? Good. And you see also the computed heat index is also going up. That's nice. So, what you could do yeah, is you could combine this reading of the data with the LCD, yeah, with the LCD display, and display not on the serial monitor, but on the, on the LC display. Yeah, display there, temperature, humidity, what you like. Yeah. And maybe you could even use a button and this button shall change 
whether it is uh, in degree Celsius or in Fahrenheit. Yeah, then we are saving, we are saving space. Yeah? It be a weather station, simple one. Yeah? You can try this. I'm pretty sure you can manage. Next time we are going to start to make some noise. Okay, next time we are talking about beepers or loudspeakers or we have two in our starter kit. We will talk about those two beepers. There's a buzzers, beepers. There is an active one and a passive one. What the difference is, we will hear in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.